welcome to the Business Masterclass and its fourth module in the learning series of business models. My name is Karin Andersson and I am employed at RISE, Research Institutes of Sweden. At RISE, I am a researcher but also a PhD student. My colleague Mohamed Reza is a research assistant at SLU, the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. Mohamed Reza has written his thesis about business model innovation within the agricultural sector. Both Mohamed Reza and I am project members in the Rubismo project. This masterclass is established through a European Commission program, Horizon 2020, for research and innovation. The masterclass contains four modules. The first module, Comprehensive business models and introduces the business model canvas. The second module explore the canvas value proposition, where the third handle the right hand side, in other words, the customer side of the business. The last and the fourth module explores the bits and pieces of the left hand side of the business model canvas. That is what this video will be about. In this video, which link you can find below the picture, we'll introduce the business model canvas as a stage and the backstage of it. If you are looking at this video on YouTube, you can also find the link in the video description. Thank you so much, Kai. Very interesting video about the stage and backstage. As you may remember, in the previous session, we worked on the value creation that brings revenue to the company. But today we want to focus on the left-hand side or value delivering component, which can help a company to manage costs by, for example, using resources efficiently with the help of partners. Therefore, this session is a continuation of the previous session. And today we want to complete the specific orders of other blocks that we have already started. The importance of the left side is that if we want to have a sustainable business model, we have to hold this equation true. It means that we have to create more value than we capture and we have to capture more value than it costs to deliver that value. Let me briefly mention again that the left hand side of the business model canvas includes behind the scenes production activities. In other words, the part facing customer is called a stage and the hidden part is called backstage. In fact, most of the time, we only see the strategies that are visible to us, but there are a lot of innovations happening in the backstage that we don't notice them. For instance, many things are happening in the backstage of the company Pania Loka, the case that we worked on it in the previous session, which are not visible to the customers. As an example, creating an association has helped the company to share the costs between a few partners since the costs for the development of a web platform was inaccessible to a single producer. In addition, the company has gathered a team of experts offering its support to producers in the daily use of the software. Or if you remember Laplan Wuller, the case that we introduced to you in the first session, in this case, more than 100 villages pulled together to save the hardware stores, bought a closed down hotel and renovated it. Then based on these valuable resources, they added some activities to promote tourism. In fact, it is a collective work in which it serves tourists by relying on the resources of the villagers. We have also another case, the company called Hermitia which produces pet food from insects. And I want to show you its backstage. But uh, first, let's look at a short animation of that company in the next slide. These black soldier fly larvae are of incredible value. 
About 400,000 larvae can be kept in seven and a half square meters. They grow very fast, feed on waste materials, and once harvested and dried, the dry mass contains 35% fat and 40% proteins, a promising source for animal feed. Already in 2006, two brothers founded the company Hermetia in Germany, aiming to produce protein-rich pet food from insects. But it took 10 years until they got the first investor. The problem was lack of knowledge, technology and regulations. So the entrepreneurs themselves got experts in the field. They developed a network with various research institutes and universities. And finally had to pass various steps to get permission to provide their product. After 2011, research outcomes confirmed the beneficial effects of insect food for skin problems of dogs. Together with the 2013 FAO report on edible insects for food, this initiated a change in customers' perception. Nowadays, Hermetia is the leading insect producer in Germany, engaging 50 scientists, engineers, and trained workers. Their reputation is well established and many international scientists visit the company to learn from their experience. Right now their innovative product is allowed to be used as dog and fish feed, but in the future it might also be allowed as livestock feed, thereby overcoming the shortage of fish meal, forest clearance for soy production and decreasing CO2 emissions. Furthermore, as there are about 2 million different insects worldwide, the potential of this untapped resource is huge. Let's see what does a customer see in the stage and back stage of the company. In this stage, customers see a sustainable pet food from insects, but there is a 10 year path to success that has made this company as a leading insect producer in Germany. In the beginning, the problem was the lack of knowledge, technology, and regulations, but entrepreneurs themselves got experts in this field. The company networked with various research institutes and universities and got permission to produce this product. And today, the company has different groups of scientists, engineers, and trained workers who help run the business. Now it's time to work in more detail. And I want to show you how a company can take action in the backstage to improve the operations and manage the costs. And since we haven't worked on the energy sector yet, today, we want to focus on a company that produces energy from agricultural pruning. Please go to the Rubis Mobitual Library and read through the case pieces. You can find the link in the video description if you're watching the video on YouTube. And in the next slide, you will also be shown a short video of that company. About 15 years ago, I started to take an interest in renewable energy, and I studied the various sources. What immediately grabbed my attention was the one deriving from wood. For an entrepreneur like me with many generations originally from this territory, it is almost natural to use olive wood to warm up, because it is a wood that resists, develops a lot of heat, and consequently creates harmony inside the houses. So it's our wood, and our wood is our territory. I found it fantastic to produce energy from waste. That was the point in wood, and therefore a natural, organic, vegetable substance. In 2010, Marcello Piccini opened the company Fuses, using olive tree prunings to produce thermal energy and electricity. In the beginning, partners saw us a little suspiciously. 
but gradually over the years this relationship of trust has increased more and more until we came to count about 2,000 farms among our partners of this agro-energy chain. Our vehicles go to the countryside completely free of charge. We make a collection of pruning residues and after which we bring them to our plant. Once they are there, raw material through a cogeneration system becomes both thermal energy and electricity. Our produced energy is then conveyed directly to the city of Calimera and feeds its citizens. For our part, we have turned their waste into a resource. The plant is essentially composed of two large blocks, a thermal part composed by a boiler where the combustion of virgin wood takes place, with hot fumes, heats and exchanges heat with the thermal oil which becomes the geothermal vector through which the electric energy is produced in the turbine. With 1,200 kilograms of olive tree prunings, 1,000 kilowatts of electricity are produced, avoiding the equivalent 500 kilograms of oil. I was always looking for a zero-waste development. In the production of thermal energy, we recover the excess heat that is not used to produce energy to dry the wood, from which we produce the pellets in our factory. We are working with a research project that is precisely to recover the ashes in the form of fertilizer. So our dream is developing an economic system that creates resources and creates jobs. Nothing is thrown away and at the same time returns the countryside in the form of fertilizer resource. There are two requirements in any part of the world. First is the surplus of pruning residues availability. Second, the need for microelectric generation. My pride is that of having created an economic activity from a scrap that maintains my family and that of all my employees and not only the ones working directly at the company. I am proud to say that my business, my profession, my company are a challenge for me. I will start with the key resources. Key resources enable a company to offer value proposition. In other words, they are the assets that a company needs to deliver the final product or service to the customers. Therefore, they can be different from the assets of the competitors. We can have different kinds of resources. For example, physical resources such as buildings, machinery, equipment and so on, intellectual resources and intangible assets such as trademarks or copyrights. In addition, human resources are the most important resources in many organizations, especially the ones that need extensive knowledge and finally financial resources and credits. Therefore, entrepreneurs have to evaluate available key resources and see which ones are essential for business success. Let's look at our case, the only micro cogeneration plant in the world. Resources include the owner knowledge, trained engineers and personnel, olive tree pronings. In addition, the company is placed in an area that has access to rich sources of raw materials and finally, plant equipment and special filters that reduce emissions. The next component is the key activities, and they are the core tasks that a company must perform to achieve its business goals. A company can be engaged in different kinds of key activities. For example, a production which includes all measures related to product development, production, and delivery, or for instance, be an expert in something, such as finding a unique solution to a specific problem. 
platform and network are another form of key activities. If you remember, in the case Panel Local, the company constantly strives to be active through upgrading its platform. Now let's look at to the company's key activities. They collect wood prunings from local farmers and produce bioenergy. In addition, they maximize the plant efficiency and improve processes. For example, they produce eco pellets from the excess heat of the cogeneration process and they intend to produce biofertilizers from the ashes obtained through the process. In addition, they continuously train the employees by an engineer in the company. The next plug is the key partners. Partnership is when two business entities form a relationship for a variety of reasons. For example, optimizing business models, risk reduction, acquisition of specific resources and activities, and finally, acquisition of knowledge or license that require a large investment in time and money. I have already mentioned that a partnership can be in the form of a loose relationship or it can be like an exclusive contract. In addition, it is important to evaluate the value proposition and key resources and make sure that a partner is filling gaps in either. Otherwise, a company must end partnership quickly to avoid further wastage of the resources. And back to the case, let's see who are the company's key partners. Local farmers who provide pronings for the company, the Italian energy company GSE who buys the energy, Ligna, the company that collects wood pronings from the local fields, and finally, we can even name the two experienced local engineers, as well as two Italian technology providers as the company's first partners. Cost structure is the last block, because we need to predefine the other blocks to be able to estimate the cost of each. A company can follow a cost-based business model, which is focused on minimizing the cost as much as possible, such as automation or outsourcing. On the other hand, a company can follow a value-based business model, which pays less attention to transaction costs, such as customization, which is based on customer preferences. In addition, a company may have fixed costs, such as salaries and rents, or variable costs, the costs that are related to services or raw materials. Overall, understanding the costs is the key to success because 90% of new jobs fail in the first three years of life due to the lack of understanding the costs required to develop their value propositions. And back to the case, we can see that the company owner decided to visit many energy plants to be able to manage the business and costs. In addition, Experience-based learning has increased efficiency and decreased personal mistakes. And finally, the creation of Ligna has increased the interaction between the supply of raw materials and the conversion process. All right, here you can see the left-hand side of FUSE's business model campus. As you can see, being placed in an area with access to raw materials as well as financial support the company owner has gained have allowed the company to produce clean energy while at the same time improves processes through constant updating. In addition, with the help of some key partners such as the energy buyer as well as Ligna, the company's energy sales and good access to raw materials are guaranteed. And finally, all these activities and interactions have helped the company to eliminate the extra costs. Okay, now we are done with the last session and I want to review again with you what we have discussed in this four learning series. In the first session, we 
discuss the strategy, business model, and business model canvas. In the second session, we reviewed the value proposition canvas and worked on the value map and customer profile. The third session looked to the right-hand side of the business model canvas, which is called value creation. And today, we worked on the left-hand side of the business model canvas to see what is happening at the back stage. Here you can see our reference list and you can read through them to get more acquainted with the left-hand side of the business model canvas. And if you have any question, you're very welcome to send us email. See you in the future and thank you so much for listening. Goodbye.